Welcome to this demonstration of mesh morphing from RBF Morph. Here we'll be using this geometry of an aircraft. We see the mesh already done and we will focus on design variation around the nacelle. Now here is another view of it where we see the nacelle in red, the wing and the fuselage in blue and the pylon that connects the nacelle to the wing in green. So what we will do is take the nacelle and translate it downward but while we do that we do not want to touch the wing or the fuselage geometry, the part in blue. Now obviously if you do that what will happen is that the pylon in green will actually change its shape and dimension. Better than a long description, an animation. So here you can see that we are moving the nacelle you see that the shape of the pylon and the dimensions of the pylons are changing and you also see that the wing stay exactly at the same location. And again, let's not forget that we are morphing the mesh. So here you see the mesh being morphed to the different new geometry. Of course we're showing here the surface mesh but the volume mesh gets morphed as well. Now let's see how that's actually done. So I open Fluent, right? Here's an nacelle again. And what I wanted to show you is that is something that we already meshed, obviously. So we have the mesh that is loaded. And here's our geometry. I will state on not displaying the mesh, just the geometry for simplicity. I will go to RBF Morph and enable RBF Morph. Now the first thing I will have to do is to define two surfaces or two set of surfaces. The first set of surfaces is actually the nacelle. And I will take all those surface representation and set their motion. And I will say that it can drop by a certain amount and by a certain distance. I will set that up. But the second set of surfaces that I will set is actually related to the wing. And here I will do something a little bit different. We said that we didn't want the wing to move so I set the motion to zero. Now at this point you could say well what about the fuselage? What are you doing there? Well what I will do is I will use an encapsulation box. Here is the box that I created. Now why is it an encapsulation box? Well Everything inside the box will allow to be morphed. Everything outside will not be morphed, so the mesh will stay the same. So here we see that we'll be able to drop the nacelle, but we wanted the wing to stay fixed. And that's why we define the surface as we did. And of course, the pylon here will actually change shape. So not now that I did all that, I will actually solve the morphing, meaning how should the mesh be modified, where will the node be, etc. Uh, that's actually live. I'm not uh, touching anything. I just wanted to show you how quick it is. We're just reaching more than 40% uh, of the morphing that's being done. You also saw how easy it was to do and to set up. And uh, we are just reaching 100%. All is set. Now, before actually do doing the morphing, let's do a little preview of what we did. And I can select the surface I want to preview. I can do amplification. Amplification of one is exactly the displacement I asked for. Or I can put other uh, numbers and have a bigger amplification. Here an amplification of zero. It's really our initial geometry. Really take a look at the shape of the pylon. Of course I can actually also do two. And here you see again how the shape of the pylon was changed. Three and so on and so forth. And what I can also do is see the initial one and the new shape. Of course the initial one is the one in colors and the new one the one in blue. That's some very nice tool to actually preview the results and make sure we got everything everything uh, right. Now, when that's done, I can actually go to the Morph 
thing solution and actually do morph. You can see that uh, undo is enabled. So that's very good if we did a mistake, you can actually undo your action right away. And as you can see here, I have the new geometry and can just start the simulation again. Now at this point you may want be wondering why should I use mesh morphing to do that? Why don't I just redo the geometry, remesh it and go on with my simulation? Well, you have the answer on this graph. You have to know two things. The first one is doing mesh morphing takes actually a fraction of the time it takes to recreate a mesh. For example, a 50 million cell mesh can be morphed in less than 60 seconds. But also, because you already have result probably from a previous simulation and because you only morph the mesh, all the results are still there and you can restart your simulation right away and your convergence will be much faster. So that's why when you see as you increase the number of design change, really you, the output you get with morphing goes up exponentially while the time goes up linearly.